If you're sitting in a movie theater during previews and you see this, you know to expect a comedy movie. If you see this, you know it's gonna be action. Make the letters a little skinny, and boom, it's sci-fi. You know this one's gonna have fast cars, this one's gonna have Michael Sarah, and this one is gonna be a rom-com. You don't even need the music to know it. But what about this? This typeface, Trajan, is probably one of the most popular movie poster fonts ever. You can see it in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Double Jeopardy, the Letters from Hugh Jumma, Titanic, Ordinary Joe Black, and Ashton the Bottle. It's everywhere. So how did it get there? I'm Yves Peters. I'm a graphic designer who has been writing professionally about type and typography since about 10 years. Yves has looked at a lot of posters, and a few years ago he started to notice a trend. So I started clicking, clicking, clicking. I didn't know where I started because I ended up looking at about 16,000 posters. How many posters did you look at? <sighs> yeah, well, it's, I look at about 100 posters per month, and I've been doing this series since 2006. It's uh, a lot of posters every year. Yeah, yeah. He noticed that the use of Trajan rose significantly in the last couple of decades. But why? In 1989, designer Carol Twombly adapted inscriptions from Roman Emperor Trajan's column into a digital typeface. It was made for Adobe, so it was a part of the software that a lot of people were starting to use to make posters. A couple years later, it made its movie poster debut here for Hector Babenko's At Play in the Fields of the Lord. After that, it was on The Bodyguard and Scent of a Woman. Then it was on three 1993 box office hits. By 1994, it was everywhere. It's originally used for epic movies, uh, movies about people that overcome difficulties, like the big war epics and so on. But then you see gradually that it becomes the standard movie font. It's like the aerial of movie posters. So people need to turn out a poster really quickly and they just pick Trajan. Eventually that overuse started to change the kinds of movies that would use the typeface. You don't see it as much on the big productions anymore. It's become the typeface of the horror movies, the B movies, and also the straight to video ones. So you see that a lot of posters are for the lesser movies that want to pretend they are better than they actually are. The rise and fall of Trajan illustrates the downside of digital typeface. The convenience of swapping fonts is a huge shift from the old movie poster days when hand-painted typefaces, or lettering, was an art that was specific to each movie. So what you see behind me, this is more like the pre-blockbuster uh, thing, pre-genres, pre-standard styles, and that's why you will be hard-pressed to find two that are similar. That doesn't make today's genre-specific typography bad design. These visual cliches make it possible to communicate tone and plot details to an audience incredibly efficiently. And there's a certain art to that. People get nostalgic about the old era of movie posters when everything was still done by hand and still very unique. But you could compare it to music, where some people say, oh, nothing, was, nothing good was produced since the Beatles. But then there's other people who say that nothing good was produced since Mozart. Fair enough. But there's many other interesting things that are being produced now. There's just much more, but there's still a lot of very good poster design happening. It's just you need to know where to look.